Gary Ray Bowles, the Interstate 95 Killer. He was referred to as the Interstate 95 Killer, because most of his victims lived close to the Interstate 95 Highway. Gary Ray Bowles was born on January 25, 1962. Bowles was born in Clifton Forge, Virginia. His father, William Franklin Bowles, had died six months before Gary was born, and his mother, Frances, remarried several times. Bowles was abused by his second stepfather, a violent alcoholic who also abused Bowles' mother and older brother. The abuse continued until, at the age of 13, Bowles fought back and severely injured his stepfather. He left home soon after, angered by his mother's decision to remain in the marriage. He was homeless for the next few years, earning money as a prostitute. In 1982, he was arrested for beating and sexually assaulting his girlfriend, and was sentenced to six years in prison. In 1991, after his release from prison, he was convicted of an armed robbery in the theft of an elderly woman's purse, a crime for which he was sentenced to four more years in prison. He was released in two. As soon as he was released from jail, his killing spree began, his victims were John Hardy Roberts, murdered on March 15, 1994, at the age of 59. David Allen Jarman, murdered on April 14, 1994, at the age of 39. Milton Joseph Bradley murdered on May 4, 1994, at the age 72. Alverson Carter Jr., murdered on May 13, 1994, at the age of 47. Albert Morris, murdered on May 18, 1994, at the age of 38. Walter J. Hinton murdered on November 16, 1994, at the age of 47. On April 14, 1994, in Daytona, Florida, Bowles killed his first known victim, John Hardy Roberts, who had offered him a temporary place to live. Following an argument, Bowles beat and strangled him to death and then stole his credit card. Police soon considered him a suspect after finding his fingerprints and probation records at the crime scene. Over the next six months, Bowles murdered five other men in Nassau County, Florida, Savannah, Georgia, and Montgomery County, Maryland. His typical modus operandi was to prostitute himself to his victims before beating and strangling them, and stealing their credit cards. While on the run, Bowles was put on the FBI's list of the country's ten most wanted fugitives for his four known victims. Finally, on October 22, 1994, Bowles was arrested for the murder of Walter Jamal J. Hinton, and confessed to all six murders. Gary Ray Bowles, was 32 years, when he was arrested on Tuesday, November 22, 1994, at an employment office in Jacksonville, Florida, for the strangulation murder of 47-year-old Walter Hinton six days before. At the time, Bowles was using the name Tim Whitfield. He allegedly had been living with Hinton for several months and continued to live in his mobile home for two days after the murder. Hinton's body was in a back room the whole time. The odyssey began in Daytona Beach, Florida, when Bowles allegedly beat and strangled his roommate John Hardy Roberts, who was 59 at the time of his death. The next murder in the alleged series took place in Wheaton, Maryland. On April 14, 1994, 
Bowles allegedly strangled David Jarman and stole his credit cards, his money and his car. From there the scene moved to Savannah, Georgia, a few weeks later. Bowles was taken in by 72-year-old Milton Bradley. Bradley was found dead on a golf course near his home. He had been gagged, strangled and drobbed. Two weeks later the trail came to Hilliard, Florida, where Albert Morris was gagged, bitten, blasted with a shotgun and strangled on June 13, 1994. In each case, Gary Ray Bowles hung out in gay bars. When he met a likely prospect, he would offer household chores and sex in exchange for a place to stay. Then, after a short period, he would violently kill his benefactor and steal money and, if possible, a car to take him away from that locale. In each case, the violence used was far more than needed simply to kill the victims. Though they were usually robbed, there's reason to doubt that as a motive. The killer was skillful enough at gaining the trust of potential victims to make their deaths unnecessary. Police identified Bowles as a suspect early on, but by keeping on the move, he stayed ahead of them. The case was profiled on America's Most Wanted in July, 1994. At that time Bowles was sharing a house with several others, who called police when they saw his picture on TV. Incredibly, a tan and a mustache had changed Bowles' appearance enough that police thought he was the wrong man and let him go. They apparently failed to check him for identifying marks. He has three tattoos and old knifing scars. It's easy to see from his case. That communication between localities that would not have been possible a hundred years ago aided in identifying a possible series of killings and came very close to capturing the alleged killer. It's likely, too that the decision to confess was influenced in part by the certainty that he would have to face the charges anyway. Computers and telecommunications have made the anonymity serial killers depend on almost obsolete. Following his arrest for the murders, Bowles told police that following his 1991 release from prison, he had moved to Daytona Beach and moved in with a girlfriend and resumed working as a prostitute. According to Bowles, his girlfriend became pregnant but then had an abortion after she learned that Bowles was a sex worker. Bowles told police officers that he blamed gay men for the abortion, and this led him to becoming a murderer. In May 1996, Bowles pleaded guilty to the killing of Walter Jamil Hinton in Jacksonville on November 17, 1994. Hinton died after Bowles hit his head with a 40-pound, 18-kilogram stepping stone, while Hinton was sleeping and stuffed a towel down his throat during the struggle. Bowles received the death penalty for Hinton's murder. In August 1997, while sitting on death row for the slaying of Hinton, Bowles pleaded guilty to beating and strangling Roberts in 1994. Bowles was found guilty of three counts of murder and sentenced to death, but the sentence was reversed by the Florida Supreme Court. When they determined that the court erred by allowing the jury to hear that Bowles hated homosexuals and that the victim was gay. He was given a new sentencing hearing, and in 1999 again received the death penalty. Bowles was executed by lethal injection on August 22, 2019, at Florida State Prison in Stark. Bowles ate three cheeseburgers, french fries, and bacon as a last meal. Thank you for watching.